when the police arrived, I was explaining all this to the officer who was filling out the missing persons report. And he looked at me and he said, well, is this the only time your son has run away? <laughs> it was as though he didn't hear me. Right. And we had five witnesses that each saw a portion of this kidnapping, and one of them was a 44-year-old attorney, a very reputable, reliable person. The police did not take it seriously. That cop left our home, and I didn't see another policeman until well into the afternoon. During that time, we organized our own search parties that went out to all the areas around Des Moines where you might think a crime would be committed, deserted areas, the state park, down by the river, any place we could think of, people were searching. One group of searchers, about 23 in the group, came back to our house in the afternoon, and they were very, very upset. And they said to me, I thought that you wanted our help. (laughs) And I said, we do. Well, apparently, while they were searching Walnut Woods, which is a wooded area, Mm -hmm. the police chief drove up, drunk. He climbed up on a picnic table in that park and used a bullhorn and said to the crowd, everybody go on home. This kid is nothing but a blankety-blank runaway. And this is what all these searchers, good people from Des Moines that wanted to help, we're told. came back and told me. This is what we were dealing with with the police department. Now, at that they point, were not only at that point not taking time, it seriously, but they were not doing their job. No, I mean, that that's that's reprehensible to say. Firstly, the fact the guy's drunk and, and is saying that in any mm-hmm. investigation doesn't seem to make any sense. But uh, the, the most chilling of all the things you told me that you amassed in terms of learning things was the, the kid who looked out the window and actually saw Johnny fall to the ground and, and be carried off. Now, how long was it before you found that kid and had that information? We didn't get that information for quite some time because what we learned later was that the police chief, upon learning what that kid had seen, paid a visit to that family and told that kid to never speak about it again. Okay. Now, so as to the part about seeing Johnny yeah, thrown right. into the car, right? I'll, I'll, he I'll, I'll did. He that. did say that he saw the car, right? And the reason that part is key and that's important, it gave the police chief what we call deniability, because what the police chief did at that point in time was list Johnny as a runaway in the NCIC computer. Correct. He was not listed as kidnapped. Correct. No, because I, 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 he, I got he that. could then say there wasn't an eyewitness that saw him right. thrown in the car because the police chief had more or less threatened the family. Right. So on this morning, because, you know, again, everything in that first 24 hours, that's where the real frenzy is, obviously. Exactly. So on this first morning, you don't know that this kid has witnessed this. You, you do know the kid's seen a car, but so is, mm-hmm. every, so is everybody else. Right. Now, that's all we knew, and it was some time before we learned the truth. In fact... It didn't come out until after the police chief had passed away. That was going to be my next question because uh, I I can only imagine, because if the police chief threatened the the child, the child's parents had to be there too. And I can only... And uh, and they all kept quiet. Well, sure they did. But Mm -hmm. uh, they, they kept quiet because they were literally in fear for their lives. But the other side of that is that had to put one heck of a question in their mind. They instantly knew that in our town, whatever's going on, we're not going to get help if we have this problem. So, exactly. uh, you know, they're being silent. Uh, you, at this mm-hmm. point, all you know is this is atypical for Johnny. He's never done anything like this before. And from the stories we're getting from all the witnesses, there was something that led us to know uh, even immediately that there was a problem. Now he's listed as a runaway, which of course your frustration level has to be through the roof. So at the point, at this point, what do you do? At that point, I started calling all of the uh, TV stations to try and get his picture circulated throughout the country right. or the area at least. Right. And the TV stations were very cooperative. They did help us, but then I realized that the police. We're not doing the job. Right. And I started uh, making contacts, trying to find 
a good private investigator that might have had some experience in this type of a case. How quickly? And so it took me a couple of weeks, but then I did um, did find someone and we hired him. Okay, so it, if a few weeks go by, you're looking for the mm-hmm. investigator, you're still hoping the police will come through, they're not. Uh, WHO TV or whatever has the stuff up on, on, their, um, on their evening news broadcasts. I'm sure you call the radio stations, too. The, there's obviously quite a bit of talk uh, in the area about it. But here's the police, anytime there's any talk, saying, oh, this is just a runaway, a bad kid runaway. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Right. They, they suppressed the story as much as they possibly could. And uh, there's only, there's only one, one of three reasons that that could be, and that is they were stupid right. or they, there was someone involved that they were protecting or they just did not have experience in this area. Yeah, they're in- and incompetent or what we know now is that somebody was involved, and um, it took a long time for that information to come forward also. Yeah, yeah, because at, th- at this point, of course, uh, the frantic thing is not laying blame on somebody. It's getting Johnny back. Mm-hmm. You're still at the stage exactly. hoping this is going to happen. And that's what we worked so hard for. And then there was about two weeks after Johnny's kidnapping, there was a small article in the Des Moines Register about two young girls aged 13 who were taken from Des Moines, taken to Omaha, Nebraska, and put into prostitution. They were recovered and brought back. And so I took that little article to the police chief, and I asked him if he would at least call the police chief in Omaha, since Omaha, Nebraska, is only two hours away from us. Correct. And see if there was any correlation, connection, anything. Right. And he looked at me and he said, no, he said, I don't have a feel for that. Mm-hmm. So then I went to the FBI office and they told me they would not touch it either. So I called all the TV stations and I did a press conference mm-hmm. asking why our police chief would not even investigate something of this nature since it was Right. Basically the same thing, except that it was two girls instead of a boy. Right. And um, after I did the press conference, it was about probably about an hour or so, I received a phone call at my home, and there was a man in, with a gruff voice saying that if I didn't stop stirring the water, that I would be dead. Right, of course. You knew that And was that coming. was my first death threat on this case and what they were trying to do is to scare me into not pursuing of course what happened to johnny yeah no of course i i could i could guarantee you that that mm-hmm. would be the, the next step it would it would have to be but again a you have no experience with this obviously uh, b again your focus at this moment in time is i'm just going to do whatever it takes to, to get my son back now yeah, by this definitely. time clearly you're suspecting the chief of police it's one of the reasons you're having a press conference and all that but it had to blow you away that the FBI wasn't interested either. That's correct. When uh, the FBI did not come on this case, they, they, no one showed up, I called the FBI office within the first couple of days after the kidnapping, and um, they sent two men over to the house, and they said they would not be entering the case because the police chief so had told would... them he did not want their help. Right, right. Which, which, by the way, I didn't realize when things were possibly interstate that a police chief could say. I didn't know that he could just mm-hmm. say, oh, yeah, well, go away. You know, there's notorious turf wars. So the first thing you wonder there, what did the FBI know? Because I, I wouldn't suspect that their normal demeanor is, oh, the police don't want us involved, so we'll just go home now. Uh, we have Th- Noreen. That's just it. This thing was bigger. Yeah. And it was, You're getting it was bigger when all these things were happening that I did realize that, I was up against something very different than a regular kidnapping where there was maybe one pedophile operating alone. Right, and that that becomes even more frightening on every level. We have Noreen Ghosh, johnnyghosh.com. I'll have it on raleigh.net. That's actually what I was doing when I started to talk to you a few minutes ago. So I'll get that up in this break, and we'll uh, we'll pick it up right there. Uh, This should terrify you, and I'm sure that it does. Again, horrible enough to think about your child missing. More horrible to think that the authorities uh, are not going to do a thing and perhaps are involved. 